Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today is July 27, 2021. This is a new study. I don't know if it's so much a Bible study, but a history lesson with some Bible lesson overtones. This lesson is going to be on the white extermination around 1800 in what is known today as Haiti. My dad was born in 1928. And when I discovered this information, oh, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago, I asked him about it and he goes, oh yeah, we heard about that in school. They taught us about when uh, what is the country now known as Haiti killed every white person on the island. That was common knowledge taught in schools. I guess what, in the uh, 1930s, 1940s, I don't know exactly when, uh, but he lied about his age to be able to join World War II, join the army when uh, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. But uh, like so many others did, he was uh, 16 years old. And he told me a funny story. He said there was a kid skinny little kid you know when you when you join the army uh they have you walk around you know with no clothes on so a doctor can examine your body and make sure uh you're fit for the army you know they don't want people that are crippled going in the army you can't get you know you can't pass boot camp and there was this one kid skinny little kid small no pubic hair. No pubic hair. And he's standing like real close to my dad. And the doctor, you know, walks up to the kid and goes, uh, son, how old are you? He's the kid with no pubic hair goes, I'm 18, sir. And the doctor said, you know what? Come back when you're 25. So, yeah. But the point is, there's a lot of things that they taught back years ago that are totally gone from history. I mean, I went to college for two years, and I never heard about the uh, Haitians killing all the whites on the island. Never heard of that until I started looking into the Christian identity movement. Now, let me qualify this and say the following. I hate slavery. I wish they had never taken one black from Africa and brought them to the Americas. Unequivocally, I can say that. I hate slavery. Wish they were never brought here as slaves. Matter of fact, I had heard that Lincoln wanted to send them back to Africa, but he was assassinated before that was accomplished. And I think that was a Masonic hit anyways. Not that Lincoln was a good guy, but uh, no. Matter of fact, I heard Mary Lincoln used to do seances in the, in the White House. And no, the Civil War was not about slavery. It was about state rights. Lincoln wanted a strong federal government. Matter of fact, the um, vice president of the Confederacy was named uh, Benjamin Judah. He was a synagogue of Satan. Revelation 2 and verse 9. And uh, he goaded the South into you know, fighting for their state rights. Oh, yeah, England's going to help us and support us. Uh, didn't work out that way. It never does. You know, anytime you're listening to one of the synagogue of Satan, whatever they tell you is a lie. 
it's like without fail. So the thing is, this uh, there were slaves in what is now Haiti. It was called uh, Hispaniola. Today, Hispan the island of Hispaniola is divided up into two, two sides. On one side is the Dominican Republic. The Dominicans were a monk of the Vatican, the Catholics. And their side of the island is Hispanic. It's kind of a mix of Spanish with uh, native Indian tribes. And then the other side of the island is Haiti, which is black, totally black. And they rose up and killed every white person on the island. Matter of fact, they killed all the um, what they call mulattoes. I may not be pronouncing that right, but they were the black and white, uh, the mixed children. They killed them too. Now, according to the U.S. Census, there is over half a million Haitians living in the United uh, in South Flor in Florida, just Florida. So, what is Haiti famous for? Well, you ever heard of zombies? Yeah, that came from Haiti. You noticed all the zombie uh, TV shows and movies out lately? Uh, let's see, they had Dawn of the Dead back in the 1960s. I think that was a black and white film, if I remember. I don't know. I, I, never, I never watched that kind of garbage. And I was pretty young. I think it came out in 64, which would have made me about seven or eight years old, somewhere around there. And uh, another thing Haiti is famous for is voodoo. You ever heard of a voodoo doll? You know, stick pins in a thing, you know. Uh, wasn't that what, uh, what was that movie, Chucky? Uh, the guy that got put into a doll or something? I don't know. I never watched that garbage. But, uh, you know, Haiti, voodoo. Now, if you listen to the black Hebrews, I mean Hebrews, you know what they tell you? Haiti is the tribe of Levi. Yeah, there were 12 tribes of Israel. Levi was the tribe of the priests who served the, uh, the, serve the Lord for the tabernacle and in the temple. They were the lawgivers. You ever heard of Moses? He was of the tribe of Levi. Yeah, what kind of blasphemy is that? Haiti is the tribe that serves the Lord with voodoo and zombies. Yeah. So, let's read about the uh, the Haitian guy that uh, killed all the whites. His name was, uh, I can't pronounce it, it's, you know... Uh, they don't even call it French. I, I had a lady. She was uh, from Paris. Uh, she was a, a Parisian, French. And she taught my uh, marketing, business marketing class in college, in business college. And we were talking about Haiti and Quebec uh, Haiti speaks a bastardized form of French. Quebec is in Canada, and their official language is French because they were a French colony. So France, uh, I mean, sorry, Canada has two official languages. Uh, if you buy a product that they sell in Canada, you know, even though you buy it here in the USA, if, if they sell that same product in Canada, it has to be in French and English. And she was always joking about uh, the people from Quebec have a special type of, you know, they have a special accent of the French. You know, it's sort of like people from New York 
And then you go down to Georgia and Texas, and you know they have their own style of speaking English. Well, we talked about Haiti, and she's like, Haitian Creole is not French. She says, it might sound like it, and she says, I might be able to understand a few words, but it's sort of like, uh, I guess, probably like Ebonics with English, you know. Yo, baby, what's up? If you call that English, you know. But um, his name, this guy's the, the leader of this, well, it was a slave uprising. His name was T-O-U-S-S-A-I-N-T. -S -S I don't know how they get saint. Uh, L-O-U-V-E-R-T-U-R-E. -E. How do you pronounce that? I have no idea. But he was the uh, leader of the revolution. It was a slave uprising. Now, you should know something. From what I understand... The slaves outnumber the French 10 to 1. And I guess they got tired of being slaves and they rose up and killed all the whites. But you got to understand something. The Lord would never have allowed this to happen if the French were in God's will. Never. I can show you in the Bible where it says that 10 would put a hundred to flight. Ten righteous in the Lord's will would put a hundred heathens to flight. And a hundred would put a thousand to flight. So evidently, these people were not in God's will. Otherwise, this never would have happened. And I have people say, you know, oh, well, Hitler was doing God's will. You know, if Hitler had been doing God's will, Germany would have won the war. And a matter of fact, I think they should have if some of the blunders that uh, he hadn't have made. You know? And I was in Germany in 75, and I love the German people. But I was appalled at the whole age groups in Germany were just non-existent. It's either people were very young or middle-aged, well, like 30. And then over that, over 30-something, they were just whole age groups gone. Entire age groups gone. Destroyed no war. And uh, I'm of the opinion that if we are in God's will, it won't matter how few your numbers are. You will win wars. But evidently, the French people were disobedient to the Lord. And the Lord allowed this, these heathen aliens in Haiti to destroy all the whites on the island. So let's read a little bit about um, this guy. It says he was a, they call him a general. And uh, they said he was a Jacobin. Now, I don't know if you know what a Jacobin is. A Jacobin in France was what they called a son of Jacob. In reference to Jacob being named, renamed by the Lord himself, Jacob was named Israel. So they called the Jacobins claim that they are the children of Jacob, the sons of Jacob, Israel. However, in France, the Jacobins were the synagogue of Satan. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up in the Bible, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Let's read it right now. Jesus speaking, I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich. Yeah, they're poor and physical, but they're rich and spiritual. 
I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 3, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. The Jacobins were the synagogue of Satan. And have you ever heard the expression, the left, the left wings, the liberals? You know where that came from? The Jacobins, because they always sat on the left. They always sat on the left. That's why they were called the left. And anything against God's word, that's where they were. And they were the revolutionaries in France. They were a secret society, sort of like the Masonic Lodge, the Freemasons. And uh, they were the ones that overthrew the king of France. Marie Antoinette never said, let them eat cake. That was a lie. Matter of fact, the Jacobins blocked all the roads leading to Paris, the capital of France, and stopped all the farmers and the food shipments from going into the city. And then when the city had no food and everybody was hungry, the Jacobins, with their newspapers or pamphlets or whatever, their social media of their day, blamed the king and queen of uh, France. Oh, they're starving you peasants. See, they always do what's called projection. They do the evil, and then they blame the other, per you know, their enemy, which is us. Yeah. Hunger games, anybody? And the Bible even warns you that in the end times, there would be famine. And guess what? They have done famine as a food as a weapon many times in history. France was among one of the first. And guess what? Who invented the guillotine? The cutting off of heads? Ah, oh, the Jacobins in France. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, there was an American. I forget who. It was around the time of the, um, when the American, America declared its independence and had somebody, somebody went over to France. They were like the ambassador. And then they saw the revolution going on and all the killing. The Jacobins were killing everybody. And he came back to America real quick because he didn't want to get caught up in all that mess and said what a bloody mess and how evil it was and was afraid for their own life. Yeah. So they hightailed it back to America and... Uh, you know, they were like, this is evil. So, and they don't want, uh, you know, the king, let's face it, the king is going to actually halfway care about his people. You know, a healthy, happy people won't overthrow you and they're going to be able to work and pay taxes, right? But the Jacobins, they don't care. Synagogue of Satan, you know? But um, the uh, France will figure prominently into this equation a little bit later. So let's let's talk about this Haitian, this guy, well, this devil. So. They were, uh, all I know is, is when Haiti overthrew and killed all the whites and the mulattoes, the, the blacks mixed with the whites, you know, they weren't paying taxes to France. You know, they said, we're, we're independent now. Screw you. 
So France sent their army to try to take back Haiti, but uh, Napoleon, from what I understand, was so busy with his war in Europe, he didn't have all the troops to worry about it. Plus, when they did land some troops there, um, the troops were... The, the tropical diseases killed the French army, just wiped them out. So the Haitians were able to keep their so-called independence. But the deal is, uh, <laughs> you know, the thing is, the French gave up on trying to take Haiti back. You know, it was just so many, you know, they're, you send the army and they all die. But you know what happens when you kill all your white farmers, your white doctors, your white engineers? You know what happens? Nobody plants crops. So a quarter of the country, Haiti, died of starvation. And you know what they did? They resorted to cannibalism. Yeah, and voodoo and zombies and oh God knows what else. But it is a documented fact that they killed every white person on that island. And the Lord let it happen. Trust me, nothing in this world happens without the Lord allowing it. It may not be his will, but he will allow it. He allowed Germany to lose World War II. It took the, all, half the world to defeat Germany in World War II. It took half the world. It took the Germans in America to defeat the Germans in Germany. But God allowed it. And don't think I don't love the German people. I do. As far as I know, I have German extraction. I'm bl German blood in me. Germany gave us Martin Luther. You ought to read Martin Luther's book, The Jews and Their Lies. Uh, for years, uh, the, the Lutheran church said, oh, that book doesn't exist. That book doesn't exist. It, that's, it's not true. But then the uh, Jews were always crying and complaining about that book. So people were saying, oh, wait a minute, why are the Jews so-called, the synagogue of Satan, why are they complaining about a book that doesn't exist? Well, finally, the Lutheran church finally said, well, yeah, that book does exist, but, but we, don't, we don't believe it, you know. But you ought to read that book. But Martin Luther gave us the, helped us, uh, give us the Reformation. And I'm not a Protestant. I'm a believer. Big difference. I didn't come out of the Vatican. And by the way, the Vatican supported Hitler. And uh, the ADL, a Jewish so-called group, admits that the Vatican supports them. But uh, Germany gave us the printing press, which they printed Bibles with. They gave us the Reformation. Germany gave us the diesel engine. Germany gave us the first car. The, uh, I think it was Benz. Yeah, that Benz, as in Mercedes Benz, Diamler Benz. So, you know, the Germans are a very industrialist people. But uh, France gave up on trying to take Haiti. So when they killed all the whites, uh, they got no industry, no food. I mean, they live, they eat mud pies. And I'm not exaggerating for food over there. I know people that have uh, gone to the Dominican Republic, which is on the other side of the island, the same island, to the airport. And then they fly over the Dominican Republic and it's beautiful and green and trees and just beautiful. And then when you're flying over Haiti, it's barren. There's no trees. 
just barren. Why? Because they cut down the trees and burned it for fuel, for fire to cook with, I guess. They're mud pies. You know, and the thing is, if you cut down a tree for fuel, you got to plant four more. And then you never run out. But uh, that requires planning and effort. You know? Just like uh, growing a garden. You know, you got to get the food and save the seeds and then plant it and then water the seeds and then, you know, weed it and everything. You know, it's, it's work. And the only thing they make in Haiti that I know of is uh, some rum. A company called Barbancourt. I don't know. I've never drank it, but uh, that's about the only industry on the island. Do you know it is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere? To find a country that poor, you got to go to India. Now, there are some people in India that are very wealthy. Uh, the guy that owns Tata Motors, I don't remember his name, but he owns Tata Motors. Guy's like a billionaire. But uh, there's people in, from what I understand, there's... Um, Two to three thousand people a day die of starvation in India. Can you imagine that? And yet they export rice. India export rice and they let their people starve. So, but uh, to find a country as poor as Haiti, you got to go to India. I and mean, that is sad. But, you know, and Haiti has been uh, an independent country for over 200 years. But guess what? They still live in the Stone Age, basically. And if the West didn't give them foreign aid, yo, yeah, we give the United States gives them foreign aid. They'd probably just starve to death and blow away, you know, turn to dust and just blow away. But, uh, you know, what do you get for um, feeding them? You get, I guess you get, uh, you get killed. I don't know. Guess what happened in, um, what was Rhodesia? I think they call it Zimbabwe now. But all the white farmers, uh, the ones that they didn't kill, left. They fled. Well, then it, nobody's planting the crops. And then the farm equipment breaks down. Nobody maintained it. Nobody repaired it. And then their people started starving. And they used to, everybody used to get fed and they exported food. But now they were begging the farmers, the white farmers, oh, please come back. Uh, why? Because you didn't kill us the first time. You want us to come back so you can get a second chance? No, thank you. And guess what's going on in South Africa right now? Same thing. South Africa, they're killing all the whites. And all the farmers are going to be dead, or they're going to run off. And uh, instead of taking Haitian refugees, I wish they'd take the whites and bring them to America. But, uh, you know, Trump was uh, asked to do that, and he didn't. Of course not, because he's one of the enemy. But uh, they're handing all over the government to the blacks in South Africa. And guess what? Water plants are shambles. Electrical plants are shambles. You know? Yeah, whites are racist. They actually know how to build and maintain things. But they're getting rid of all the whites from uh, all the technological jobs. I was reading that you have to have 
just to maintain a built civilization that you need a minimum IQ of 85 to maintain a civilization. I heard in Africa the average IQ is 65 among the blacks. Now, please understand, I, do I hate blacks because of the color of the skin? No, absolutely not. Uh, but 95% of all the uh, times I've had inter interactions with blacks has been extremely unfavorable. I do not believe the Lord made a mistake when he put the blacks in Africa and the whites in Europe and separated us and segregated us. I don't believe God made a mistake. And of course, the synagogue of Satan wants to bring blacks to Europe and America. But when it comes to the uh, their, where they're living in, you know, the Israelis in the Middle East, they're kicking them out. They won't let them in. They have a wall. They have a 10 foot high concrete wall with barbed wire at the top with guard towers. And yet those same tribe will uh, were crying that uh, how racist it was for us to build a wall at our southern border. You know, Jesus didn't call them hypocrites for nothing. Oh, and that's another thing. I, I just love hearing people say, oh, well, Jesus was a Roman invention to control the people. Or Jesus was a, never existed. Or Jesus was a Jewish invention to control the people. Boy, I'll tell you what. You can tell those people never read the Bible. Read the eighth chapter of the book of John, and you tell me the Jews so-called invented Jesus, where he called them children of the devil yeah right if if they had invented jesus and jesus had never lived he'd have been praising them for everything oh you guys are the greatest and no he called them children of the devil i i don't think uh if i was going to invent somebody to you know i i sure as Sure as heck wouldn't be telling, having them call me the children of the devil. So, whatever. But uh, having a 65 IQ, when you need an 85 IQ to maintain a civilization, it ain't going to happen, buddy boy. So, I give them another 20 years and... South Africa will be uh, Stone Age, just like Haiti. You know, Haiti has had 200 years of their supposed freedom. And they're almost no different than Central Africa with straw mud huts. Seriously. I mean, seriously. Leprosy. Do you know that leprosy was almost wiped out in the United States? There was like less than uh, two dozen cases in 1950s in the entire United States of leprosy. Well, then when the Haitians started coming here, we had uh, over two dozen cases in just Miami alone. Just one, you know, thing. But supposedly there's over a half million Haitians living in South Florida. Well, Florida. And that's per the census, which probably means it's closer to a million. And I don't know how many more live in the rest of the country, but uh, there's a lot of them here. And you should see the way they look at you if you're white. Oh, my God. Lord, help us. I've worked with these people. It's, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't call them people, but the two-legged creatures, I mean, they're probably all possessed of devils. So, but this is God's judgment upon a wicked nation. They're here. And they consider, and oh, by the way, 
uh, the day that they celebrate their independence is the day that they killed the last white person on the island. That was their independence celebration. And they, may, they think, oh, American blacks are stupid because they're letting white people live because they haven't killed us all yet. I mean, I'm not kidding. I'm very cautious when I'm around Haitians. I mean, they hate us with a passion. And I want to live far away from them as possible. But how come this how come this isn't uh, information isn't widely known? Now something else you should know. Do you know this black that killed all the whites on the island? Do you know that in the county where I live here in South Florida, they named a high school after him. What was his accomplishment? Killing all the white people. It says it's an innovative charter school serving multicultural and multilingual students. And then if you go down to, uh, it's in Delray Beach, by the way. And then they named another school after him, an elementary school in Miami. Oh, yeah. And what was his uh, claim to fame? Killing all the white people. But uh, me pointing that out makes me a racist, right? Yeah, that be's racist. Yeah, killing white people, that's not racist. Telling people about white genocide, that's racist. Yeah. So... I hope you learned this little bit of history. But let me tell you something, people. When you are in God's will and you turn from the wickedness that's in your hands and repentance and obedience, these heathens will generally not touch you God will protect you. But I suspect that the King of France and the people in Haiti before, you know, the French in Haiti were absolutely not in God's will. Absolutely not in God's will. So, and I'm telling you people, America is not in God's will. All this immigration is Revelation 12, the flood of the dragon, a flood of heathen nations and aliens upon us. And they're not here to bless us. They are here as a curse. And everybody thinks, oh, if only, you know, if only Hitler would have won World War II, we'd be a much better place. Well, there's some things I agree with him with. But you know what? There was a lot of Lutheran ministers that... Uh, were killed in Germany during that time period. A lot of them. And the Lutherans were fighting against the Vatican. And the Vatican supported Hitler. And today the Vatican supports the ADL, which is a Jewish group. And the ADL proudly brags that the Vatican supports them strongly well guess what people it's not that long ago world war ii is not that long ago there's people living today that live through world war ii not many so did the vatican change that much from the 40s to today 
I don't think so. I don't think so. The West has forgotten the Lord, turned their back on him, and today the Lord has turned his back on the former white Western nations that used to be Christian. So, repentance, people. Get into the Bible. Find out what God wants from your life. There's no time to be playing around. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Noahide Laws, the Seven Laws of Noah, N-O-A-H-I-D-E. By those laws that are passed in the United States, they could kill every Christian. We're guilty of law number one. Penalty is death. Method of execution, beheading. And guess what? That's in the Bible. Yeah. It says the Christians will be beheaded in the end times. Isn't that funny? Another thing, too. The U.S. Department of State even has a division that deals with anti-Semitism and saying who the Bible says killed Jesus and it wasn't Rome. It was the synagogue of Satan. By saying that is guilty of anti-Semitism. They got laws in the books now that could ban the King James Bible. I strongly recommend you get some King James Bibles and put them away. They're going to be illegal one day. Probably a lot sooner than you think. You know, blacks make up about 13% of the population in this country. And they commit just shy of 50% of all violent crimes and murders. I think it's 47 or 48%. I mean, that's almost half, just shy of half. 13% commits almost half the murders. But old Biden says, oh, it's white supremacists that are the greatest danger to this country. Well, yeah, whites are the greatest danger. If they were in Christ and in God's will, with God's blessing. That's why they've infiltrated the churches. That's why you got all those devils on TBN preaching the prosperity gospel, they call it. Yeah, God wants you rich. So ask God for a, you know, ask God for a blessing. Lord, I want a Mercedes Benz. Uh, praise a Jesus. Well, I wouldn't mind having a Mercedes Benz, but... Uh, you know, but I don't think that's what God wants me to have. God wanted me to have a swift kick in the rear to do what he wants me to do. So people, white persecution is coming a lot sooner than you think it is. And you know what they're going to do? Oh, they're not going to tell you, oh, it's, we're rounding up the whites. No, we're going to be, we're going to be quarantining the unvaccinated. Ooh, that white person's not vaccinated. He doesn't trust the science. Oh, he's a danger to society. He's contagious. We got to quarantine him. Come with me, sir. We got to take you to the camp. Mark my words, it's coming. It's coming, people. And instead of worshiping an idol like Hitler and reading Mein Kampf, maybe you should be reading the Holy Bible where Jesus, his struggle, what do you say? What do you say? Yeah, the war on whites is going to be the war on 
the virus and whites are the virus to the children of the devils oh yeah and you know they want to reduce the carbon well guess what we are the carbon that they want to reduce yeah we are carbon-based life forms we are the carbon that they want to reduce they want us dead people and the Lord's going to give it to them for the majority a people that will not honor the Lord Jesus Christ will not have his protection and the Lord will allow Satan to destroy us and all his minions I'm sorry that I don't have good news you want to hear good news look up Joel Osteen that big old toothy smile oh Jesus loves everybody Jesus loves everybody I don't think so I don't think Jesus loves Satan I don't think so and in Malachi 1 definitely Jesus doesn't love Esau said he hated Esau and laid his heritage waste and the Bible says a man's heritage is his children people I don't do this for my health I used to get death threats you think I like this you think I like uh, preaching gloom and doom I feel like I know what Jeremiah went through I kind of feel that way I'm not comparing myself to Jeremiah by the way I'm not but I think I kind of have a sort of similar understanding of what he went through howbeit little as it might be there's nothing good going on people nothing read the book repent get into God's will quit looking to Hitler and all these other people Trump is not gonna save you he's one of them and if you don't believe me write me a comment and I'll send you a, a video that shows him uh, prior to the election he's saying oh I'm gonna investigate Hillary and she's gonna be in prison and then after he gets elected he's like oh well Bill I, I love you know the Clintons are good people I don't want to hurt them and then after he's He's sworn in he's at a dinner banquet well Bill and Hillary are there and he asks everybody please stand and clap for the Clintons uh, I'm honored to have them here boy that story changed huh but 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 so, you know he had me fooled for a while when I saw millennia say the Lord's Prayer in the Melbourne Airport on TV I thought wow we got King Josiah boy I was wrong you know what they say P.T. Barnum you know the P.T. Barnum and Barnum Bailey Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Circus a sucker is born every minute and boy that's the truth you see a politician's lips moving especially if they're synagogue of Satan you know they're lying so all right people I'm sorry I don't have good news so all blessings praise glory and honor in Jesus precious name amen